Hey, good morning students and welcome again to eSIMS Engineering. This is Jeff Coppertite here from the channel. I'm here to today show you how to create uh, the first three parts. I already made a separate video for the uh, for the cam for the fourth part and I'll link that in the description uh, and if I don't just let me know. Uh, but I will uh, be showing here how to make the other three parts in here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with this first part. So now let's go back to the activity real quick and we can show you. We're going to make this part, first part, second part, third part. All right, so let's start with the first part, this little uh, funny ledge kind of part. So we're going to start by creating a sketch and we're going to outline sort of the overall shape of the piece using the line tool. So I'll start down here. I'm going to go start at the bottom left and I'll work my way all the way around. I'm going to use all of horizontal and vertical lines and see I'm getting auto constraints. I'm getting horizontal, vertical lines, perpendicular lines. I want those because when I dimension the part later, I don't want any lines to go askew on me. I'm also lining up certain lines that I know line up. But even if you don't get that or if it doesn't work out when you dimension it later, it will. So don't worry too much if you miss it. That, although this line here, I want to make sure that those don't line up, the vertical edges at least. Okay. I'm just kind of sketching the overall thing. And I come around, I stop at that, and I hit right click and I hit OK. So I've got that part that sort of outline here. Now, I've got a, a lot of dimensioning to do. I'm going to start by putting in this dimension on the bottom left here. By clicking the line, I'm going to go 1.5 inches. Now, of course, when that happens, the part gets bigger because the original part was 0.49. So I just zoomed out with my scroll wheel and just to make sure that I had uh, that whole part in view. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in just more dimensions. We're going to work our way around. Uh, this line here is 0.5 inches. Uh, this line here is also 0.5 inches and this line here is 0.5 inches and I'm going to make the overall and this notice I have to click these two lines to make this overall dimension here of 4 inches and don't worry about that that shortened up on you that's okay or on me uh, I want this other side this other side I shouldn't have to constrain because these are automatically in line with that so I'm going to leave that alone if I if I get an issue later I'll come back to it but it looks fine to me let's make that 1 inch this is going to be two inches and see how that looks like that worked out pretty well and then this is going to be one inch we're going to throw that in there as well it should work out there we go okay so that looks pretty good uh, for that sketch and I want to make sure it says it says two dimensions needed but I believe there are dimensions that are not something that we need to put in so it looks pretty good to me okay we're going to finish the sketch and let's zoom out a little bit and let's go to our extrude tool so we're going to extrude, and the depth of this part, we're going to extrude the whole thing first. And this is 2.5 inches, so I'm going to go to this window here, 2.5, and extrude out, and there's most of the part right there. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to create a little ledge on this face. So the way we do that is we go to the sketch mode, and we, by hitting sketch, and then selecting this, we can select and start a sketch on this face. Alternatively, we can also hit escape, click the face, and then we also get a little pop-up window here on editing, extrude, or sketch, or creating a sketch. So we can create a sketch on that face as well the same way. So we'll start by creating sketch. And notice that we really, it's hard to kind of see what we're doing or where the lines are. So I'm going to use the project geometry tool, and I'll just basically click the face, and notice that it will show up in a yellow box to indicate where existing geometry already is. And I also can use, use that for dimension lines. So I'm going to start by making a rectangle. And the rectangle is going to be right about here automatically perpendicular and horizontal which is nice and I'm going to dimension the location and depth and uh, sorry not depth width and height of this rectangle as well so we're going to go 0.75 so that's 0.75 inches that way uh, the width of the overall rectangle is 0.25 inches now it's pretty close there not 0 0.5 0 0.25 uh, and then the location this way is 0.5 inches 5 inches and then the extrusion depth is going to be 0.75. So that looks pretty good. We'll finish the sketch. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Hold on. This is a good point here. If I made a mistake, I forgot to mention one thing. If I go back in here, I can either right click and then edit the sketch. Or alternatively, I can click the sketch. I also can just create a whole. Oh, no, not that. I'm sorry. I have to click the sketch itself. I can edit the sketch. Oh, it's easier. I I'm used to some, I know that there's sometimes new controls in the new editions, but I just go with what I know. Bowser, right click, extrude, and edit the sketch. I forgot to put the overall uh, width of the rectangle, which is not 1.28, it's 1.5 inches. Okay, now I'm done with the sketch. Now I'm gonna extrude. 
and I'm going to click this part of the sketch. And notice that this time it waited for us to click because there was more than one possible area for extruded extrusion. I could also I also could have extruded around as well. And this is going to be a 0.75 depth, and that is the part. So that's part one right there on uh, on this activity. So we'll go ahead now and we're going to go into the second part, and we'll do that by starting I and going to standard IPT and we create. So this part here, we're gonna pretty much accomplish the same way, except we have one different, slight, uh, slightly different extrusion feature, and that's gonna be the cut feature. So we're gonna make the XY plane here, and we're gonna draw, just like before, we're gonna draw out the general outline of the part. So we're gonna start with all vertical and horizontal lines, and make sure that's horizontal, that's good, all right. Make sure that's in line. You see how you can sell the little da dashed line right there to indicate that it's in line? Make sure that's horizontal. Go down a little bit. Go over a little bit, go up, make, that, make sure that's in line with the point to the left there. It looks pretty good. And click OK. All right, so we do that. And again, dimensions. Make sure it's the right size. Now this time the dimensions are in millimeters, by the way. Notice that if you pay attention on, to the, on the drawing, and I'll show you here, it says that all dimensions are in millimeters. This is not a 60 inch part. This is a 60 millimeter part. So a couple of things you can do. Number one. You can type your dimensions and include the letters MM into the dimension, and it will automatically convert to inches and display as inches, but in reality it's millimeters. Or you can actually uh, modify your Autodesk setup to display millimeters itself. So you can, if you, you can do that by going to the Tools menu, going to Document Settings, and then going to the Units and selecting for length millimeter instead of inches. And now I can actually default and use uh, millimeters and just type in the number and it will default to millimeters. So, okay, now, this is a uh, 15 millimeters. All right, 15 millimeters there. This is 10 millimeters. And this is 60 millimeters. This is, it looks like, that should be good. So this is over here. This is 40 millimeters. And I'm just using the activity sketch. Uh, to get these numbers as well. And then this here is 25 millimeters. All right, and I don't have to dimension that because I can figure that out by doing 60 minus 10 minus 25. So I don't need to put that into the part as well. Okay, so now we've done that. I'm just making sure it's going over. I've got all the dimensions I need, and I do. So I'm now gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna extrude. We're gonna make this overall depth to be 30 millimeters. And we have the starts of a part. Now, the next thing to do is notice that there's a little hole over here. So again, I can click this face and I can click create a sketch on it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna create a rectangle. And I'm gonna dimension and locate that rectangle. I didn't need to do the project geometry here because this is all one face, but in case you ever want to, you can do that too as well, right? It's kind of a good habit to get into for later, especially, yeah, later on, especially for uh, more advanced parts. So that's three millimeters away from that edge. Uh, this overall width is 15 millimeters, and this overall height is 10 millimeters, and um, where is it from the bottom? Five millimeters from the bottom, as the dimension tells us there. Five millimeters from the bottom. Okay, so we'll finish the sketch. Now, when you go to extrude here, not revolve, oops, wrong part. When we go to extrude here, we're going to click this, and it's going to default to the, to the standard join, right? I'm going to show both windows and show you how you can do it in both, right? In the middle, there's an option here. We have join, cut, and intersect, okay? Um, we're going to use a cut, and we want it to go all the way through the part. So we can actually do that in one of two ways. Number one, we can specify how deep, or we can use this little extent uh, option here and go uh, all. And it will instead move it all the way through the solid model. And we hit OK. And we get ourselves a nice little hole through the part. Right? So that's that. OK? So that's part two. Now we'll go ahead and create the third part. So the third part here, we're going to use a little additive modeling to create. And we have a uh, kind of, well, we're going to use a little bit of subtractive modeling as well in this case. right? So we, we could do all subtractive modeling at this part. And that would be fine. but. It's probably better to use a combination of both additive and subtractive modeling. Um, just for just for kicks, I'm going to use all subtractive modeling. Just just for kicks. All right. So we're going to use X Y plane, and I'm going to sketch an overall box for this part. So I'm going to do a rectangle, and it's defaulted to inches again. Good. Uh, I'm going to use a rectangle, and I'm going to make it 
a, uh, we'll do the front, since I did the XY plane, we'll do the front view. It's going to be a 2.5 inch high, zoom out a little bit, by, uh, looks like 2.5 inches wide as well, right? And then we finish the sketch, and then we're going to extrude, and we're going to go 3.5 inches deep. So we have a box, right? And you're thinking, okay, well, how in the heck am I going to make this part out of this box? Well, we're going to cut away parts of this box using the subtraction tool or the uh, cut tool on the extrusion option. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the sketch, and we're going to start by creating and using project geometry. We're going to create a little rectangle from the corner, not quite to the opposite corner. And I'm going to dimension this rectangle by using these two lines just to make sure. And I'm going to make this, uh, let's see here, looks like 2.5 inches, right? And I figured that because on the, on the sketch, let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm kind of looking at this from the top, right? So the sketch here says it's one inch this way, and then it's 3.5 overall, so I just did 3.5 minus 1 or 2.5, and I made sure that rectangle is 2.5. Now watch this. Now I'm going to go to my extrude option. I'm going to click this face, and I'm going to cut away to a depth of 1.5 inches, right? So I'm gonna do a cut, and I'm gonna change the depth to 1.5. And when I do that, you'll see now I have kind of something that starts to look more like the part that you're trying to make. Now, you very easily, and I wanna stress this, you very easily could have just sketched this side here, and then extruded it this way, and gotten the exact same thing, okay? So I don't want you to think that you, what you're doing is wrong just by watching me do do it that way, you um, I just want to show you there's obviously more than one way to accomplish this part. So now, when you get to this part though, uh, these next two little inlets, this cut here and this cut on the top, um, those are best done with subtractive modeling. Uh, so if I have the overall thing, I can just go either on the top and then cut down, or I can go on the side and cut out. And here, I can kind of do the same thing. I can either go on the top and cut down, or go to the side and cut in. Right, so I'll do one of each. I'll I'll will do this part from the top, and I'll do this part from the um, from the side. So I'm going to go to this uh, sketch mode on the top here, and I'm going to create another rectangle. So I'm going to go from here, and oops, you know what? I probably should project the geometry. Let's do that. Um, so let's do that rectangle, and let's do that here. Okay, so. All right, so we've got this part here. Now we're going to just dimension where it is. So this from here to here is going to be 0.5 inches. And then from here to here is also 0.5 inches. And then since I made the sketch on this geometry, I shouldn't have to further constrain that. And then I'm going to do an extrude, and I'm going to do a cut. And I only want to do it 0.5 inches total. So we got that. Now, whoops, not extrude. I want to do... Okay, so we'll do a sketch on the front here, so I'll do it this way. I also, like I said, could have just went on the top of this piece here. I could also could have been on the top and just went cut down, but I choose to do it here. So, project geometry, and do the same thing. I'm just going to do a little rectangle, and go to the bottom left, hit OK, and we'll dimension the location of that rectangle, so it's going to be an inch away on either side. So one there, and then one there, and then finish the sketch. And again, we'll do another extrude, and we'll do another cut. And this time, we're going to cut at 1.5 inches according to the sketch. And we hit OK, and we are done. So that is part three. So that's all three of the other parts. As I said, I've already got a separate video for the cam, so go check that out, and I'll put a link to the uh, to the video in the in the description section of the video. So I hope you had a wonderful. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Uh, if it was, please consider uh, hitting like on the video, and please subscribe to Esims Engineering. I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to be awesome.